Before we begin, let me provide a five-minute summary of why I'm here and why I thought it was so important to produce this interview series, as this isn't a justification for my investing four months of my life into producing this interview. Rather, it's how you might realize the comprehensive connectedness of the consequences causing catastrophic crisis on so many continents. Today's economy is the stronghold of con men and Ponzi schemers, and this has everything to do with public education producing incoherent students who then grow up to be investors. In 2002, to battle this corruption, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was enacted by Congress to prevent corporations from deleting financial documents so as to create an audit trail of transactions for the purposes of fiscal transparency. This was done in an attempt to curb the exponentially growing frauds of the time, such as Enron, Tyco International, WorldCom, and many others. As you now know, the ongoing financial depression, which was triggered by the 2007 to 2009 global recession, was not prevented by the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, and in fact, as you're about to learn, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act enabled the triggering of the global financial depression. The American public was no longer able to recognize fact from fiction and the incoherence instilled over generations of public schooling left the average citizen and even many wealthy or well-to-do folks intellectually unable to protect themselves from financial predation. This is the root cause of the real estate market crisis as well as the ongoing financial depression. And this is where I come into the picture, as in 2003 I became a corporate whistleblower under the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. I provided information to the SEC and even though the law provides quote-unquote protection for whistleblowers like me, I was terminated in retaliation and my career was ended. I filed a lawsuit. I represented myself in court against a multi-billion dollar international corporation and after three years and after proving my case in court, including the fact that the SEC acted with complicity to protect the perpetrators, my case was dismissed on a technicality, recognizing that the events I proved in court actually happened but were conveniently, quote-unquote, outside the statute of limitations for the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. I then took my evidence and approached CBS's 2020, PBS's Frontline, and many other so-called investigative news shows, and none of them were interested in warning you, the public, about the impending consequence to the massive frauds identified by me and several other whistleblowers way back in 2003. Among the accounts I managed in New York City were J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, Lehman Brothers, Deutsche Bank, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Tyco International, WorldCom, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, AIG, and many, many other notorious financial services companies. Of course, back then I thought I was selling them software which was mandated by Congress under the Sarbanes-Oxley Act to prevent them from proliferating white-collar fraud, and ironically enough, the software which I was selling them, which was mandated by the Congress to maintain the fiduciary compliance, actually had a backdoor in it which allowed corporate fraud to exponentially increase, including the quadrillions of dollars in derivatives trading. After I warned the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC then purchased the product after I had also provided evidence that it had a backdoor which enabled users to circumvent the Sarbanes-Oxley legislation. And in fact, the SEC as of 2003 was actually facilitating these firms with the ability to commit crimes on a heretofore unimagined level of destruction. Our 2010 film, 2020 Hindsight Censorship on the Front Line, features an interview wherein I explain all this in detail. This video is linked in the episode notes on peacerevolution.org and is free to all who are interested enough to inform themselves of that which corporate mass media cannot afford to share with you on this topic.
Moreover, if you'd like some juicy audio to bolster your education of all things financial fraud related, Peace Revolution Episode 5, Overstocked, How Naked Short Selling and Counterfeiting Stocks Create Cascading Economic Failures, is our interview with Dr. Patrick Byrne, who's the CEO of Overstock.com. And it contains the information you need in order to start understanding the ever-growing financial depression, which is adversely affecting all of us in a variety of ways. Without the public receiving the tools to discern fact from fiction and the methods to attain certainty, to plan effectively for the future, and to protect ourselves and each other from predators, the public will continue to be held slave to the fictions of con men and the legislation of legal plunderers. That's why I'm here. That's why we created TragedyAndHope.com, Peace Revolution, and why I thought that one of the best things that I could do with my time over the past four months was to produce the following interview with John and deliver to you a long-lost gift of essential wisdom, which he refers to as your birthright. These interview sessions are designed to resurrect your curiosity, to stimulate your use of reason, to inspire you to look around, to provoke you into asking questions, all of which sparks your creativity and your inventiveness and ignites the solution-making process in each and every one of our lives. Its function is to provide a ramp to learning, discussion, respectful debate, and compassionate forms of communication. This is episode 41, the ultimate history lesson, hour one plus commentary. Thank you for your support and thank you for tuning in and not dropping out.